It's the Dixie Elixirs Tour. Joe Hodas brings us through the facility and uh, shares the unique way that they're looking at things, and that is uh, by way of transparency. So a lot of windows into uh, each room to make sure that you can see everything. And again, on this one, make sure to flip through uh, the photos that we've provided as we bring you through the tour. All right, so we are here at the uh, the Mothership headquarters, Dixie Elixirs. Joe Hodas is going to give us the tour. I'm really getting a tour from Joe Hodas. Oh, the, the Joe Hodas, lucky that, you. That's exactly it, CMO, right? Correct. And now you've been here for like a year and a half, which is in, uh, it's, it's like dog years in cannabis. So it's yeah, like 15 it's like, years. Easily 15 years. Um, <laughs> And, uh, you know, today feels like about 20 of those 15. Uh, so <laughs> I will. Um, so we really appreciate you doing no, this my today. Pleasure, my pleasure. <laughs> so you are you just, so you know, you're standing in what we call the exhibit hall. And I think the last time you were here, if there was anything in here, it was uh, maybe some beams and some plastic or uh, some uh, uh, plasterboard. That's that exactly right? right. Complete construction site. Last time I was here. You know, let's go see if there's some beer in that keg right there. Okay, let's do that. <laughs> there might be, actually. I don't remember if we got the keg uh, refilled or not. So there's a huge bar here. There's uh, kind of tall boy or high boy uh, tables. There's some sitting areas, very colorful, kind of uh, multi-layered. There's a, some sort of vending machine, which I don't think I've ever seen before. What's that vending machine? It's a little flat. The vending machine. And Joe is trying the uh, beer from the kegerator, which is... Not working to his uh, to his taste. Yeah, I'll drink that. Okay, fair enough. Um, so yeah, so the, we have a couple things. Would you like a beer? Uh, sure. Great. So we have a couple things um, that uh, that take place in here, and, and you're pointing out um, one of them, which is we often will allow this space to be used by companies that we like or partner companies or organizations because we have about a thousand people a quarter that come through here, and so. We'll leverage this space for them to, <laughs> excuse me, them to uh, display their wares or their brands, um, because we want to we want to share in that in that wealth, so to speak. So uh, this particular company happens to make a, a really cool vending machine with a great uh, digital interface, and they're looking to get those into dispensaries. Ultimately, we'd love to have Dixie products vended from those. Um, to be clear, only in legal dispensaries, obviously not. You know, I think when they first launched, everyone was like, oh, my God, there's going to be a vending machine on every street corner with right. marijuana. And No, right. they're in legal dispensaries, but it helps with the, the uh, process and the flow in a dispensary. If it's really crowded and you know what you want, you go right to the machine, Just go you right get there. your edible, and boom, you're done. There you go. So. And it is Friday afternoon, so cheers. Cheers. There you go. Yeah. We're yeah. sipping beer is what we're doing. What are we sipping, by the way? It tastes like a Colorado beer. Uh, Looks like Great what's divide, on Nomad Pilsner. Great Divide. Nomad Pilsner. It's a Pilsner. It is a, it is a uh, local beer. Uh, Great Divide. Like that company. Um, so the, the other things that we do in here are we do butt tender trainings. We do um, various educational initiatives. We have um, oftentimes we'll have our dispensary partners come and bring their employees down so we can help uh, uh, have them understand how the edible process works and what we do in this in this uh, facility. So. You know, most marijuana facilities look at an ROI per square foot uh, and how much revenue they can generate with each square foot. We we know that this does not generate direct revenue. We're not growing marijuana in this room. We're not selling it in this room. We're not even manufacturing it in this room. Mm -hmm. We're using it for education. We're using it to demystify. We're using it to further the cause of legalization and to create a, a better industry overall. I think long term that does pay dividends. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, everybody knows that if you are in business, in the cannabis business, you are an activist. Yeah, I mean, I, I well, I would actually say, if you aren't uh, intending to be, then you probably shouldn't be in the business. Exactly. Go look at uh, maybe just urban farming for you. Yeah, yeah there's a lot of other <laughs> options. Absolutely. You've got to <laughs> believe in what you're doing. You've got to be okay with the fact that in order for this to happen the way we all want it to, you, you've got to be out there uh, uh, touting the industry and, and doing it the right way. That's it. All right, where do we go next? Go. What I always talk about on tours in, in this room is, in addition to this being an education and an exhibit hall, it is also the first time that you'll see uh, our first two pieces of what I call transparency. So this whole facility was designed to, to be completely transparent so that it, anyone coming through can see exactly what we do and how we do it because we knew part of that idea of, of really pushing legalization forward and legitimizing the industry is um, allowing people to see what we do. We think that most people probably 
who aren't in the industry and come in here, they probably have a perception that we're in some, you know, back corner of a kitchen making candy for kids in the dark. Um, this is a, you know, this is a state-of-the-art facility. Um, these two windows, you're looking right into where we extract the canvas oil through our waters uh, technology. So that's a, it's about a $200,000 piece of equipment that uh, Nick is actually working on right now. We put uh, raw plant material into those first two vessels, and then through the magic of supercritical CO2 extraction that I cannot begin to explain to you, but <laughs> Nick probably could, uh, it, uh, it actually acts as a solvent and strips oil out of the uh, uh, plant, and that becomes the, the core of our, uh, of our products. Okay, so there you go. Uh, on this side, the science team is working with those extractions, looking at how can we isolate various terpenoids and, and cannabinoids, how can we uh, take those extractions and uh, uh, infuse them into different foods and products, um, what are new innovative delivery systems that we can utilize. So the, the whole science team kind of works on this half of the, uh, of the building. Yeah, you guys are pretty consistently putting out new product and uh, in new and different ways, and you're saying that that's the room where that uh, initial testing happens. Part of, it, part of it. I mean, there's a number of different places. It happens on the culinary side. It happens on the marketing side by identifying the opportunities. So it's all, you know, collaborative, collaborative effort. Oh look, there's Nick. Here's Nick. Hey Nick, we saw you uh, doing some super critical. Yeah, a little bit. This is set uh, with Captain's Entertainment. There we go. Yeah, we're doing a little uh, tour, podcast tour. Gotcha. Yeah. Excellent. Well, I hope you enjoy. We we are. <laughs> yeah, we're All right. Good to meet you. All right. You know we have a uh, great divide in the keg up there. <laughs> what? You know we have great divide. In Joe, just uh, speaking to uh, to. Right. Yeah. Speaking to the beer that's in the can. So this is this is our other extraction room. This is um, our uh, other waters machine, and this is really our primary extraction room. But uh, you know, a little side note: this room and that room, uh, it took a long time to get those approved because the city had never really approved an extraction room like this using an extraction platform like that, and it took a long time. And it took you know, the building inspectors and the MED and the city and, you know, fire department, everybody to kind of agree that these were the things that were necessary because it, it, for the first while there it was, you know, one department said this, the other department said, no, 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 you need that. And then it, we actually could not extract for quite some time while they were trying to finalize the uh, certificate of occupancy for the building and decide exactly what this room needed. So we got through that, but it was not an easy, uh, easy thing whatsoever. So more windows, right? So left and right, you have windows into, um, this is where we do a lot of our intake. So you see a scale there. So when we get raw plant material in, we intake here, we track it, we record it, we weigh it, we make sure that we know what we're getting in. Um, on this side, this is what we call production room number one. Um, and I think what's important here, uh, you know, and, and when during busier times, you'd have people in here putting the products together and packaging, but this particular machine right here is our, our mint press. Uh, I, I'm sorry, it's not actually the mint press, it's the machine that we use to package the mints. Mm -hmm. uh, and the mints are packaged in such a way that, you know, we're really proud of them. They're, they're really one of our, not only our best sellers, but also an example of where packaging can and, and should go. Each mint is individually child resistant. Um, the packaging is pharmaceutical grade. Looks beautiful. Uh, our production team hates it because it's very time consuming and, and labor intensive, but we believe it's the right thing to do and, and we've made that investment and uh, you know, so we, we now have uh, machinery that allows us to uh, create that, that sort of vacuum sealed, foil packed uh, uh, mint press or mint uh, product. There you go. And I've, I've seen those on shelves. You've got both sativa and indica. Well, not exactly. We have awakening and relaxing. And oh, excuse me. Really strain, they're not strain specific. That's all right. Yeah. Um, it's, you know, a lot of people would make that assumption. Mm -hmm. Not strain specific. We actually use other essential oils and things like, uh, for example, in the awakening, we have ginkgo and uh, ginseng, right? Mm -hmm. In the relaxing, we have lavender oil, other, other elements that help to create that effect. Interesting. All right. So we're going through a door here. The ceilings just got way higher. Into the, the back of the warehouse. That side is the uh, employee break area. Um, one quick thing that's actually interesting to note, and you know, we can go up there if you'd like, but we have, uh, that is our employee fitness area. Um, we have, you know, some weights, a bike, it's a fitness room for employees to use. We also have a, a woman who comes in once a week who does a fit class and get pretty good participation. We've had yoga and different things. Um, you know, we, we consider ourselves to be a, a, a wellness company. We want our employees to have access to that. Um, ideally, in the future, we'll have an even more expanded program, but we're getting things up and running, so yeah. you know, hopefully they'll, uh, they'll begin to make use of that. Yeah. Um, How many employees are you up to uh, so far? Um, in this facility, we have between 40 and 50, mm -hmm. so uh, it varies uh, depending upon 
if we add headcount for production times and things like that. So um, we'll, we'll walk this way though. And this is uh, our other production room slash kitchen, which you know is, is a little bit quiet right now. But yeah. Um, this is where we do the, the majority of our food development. So it's where we create the infusion, how we emulsify the products. Um, you know, our chocolate is tempered in here, things like that. Uh, and then um, most of our edible products are made in this room. Uh, there's a little fridge with some oil in it in case you ever haven't seen a, a beaker full of, of cannabis oil. There it is. Uh, uh, you know, uh, I can't, I couldn't even begin to estimate how much, how many dollars worth of oil is in that refrigerator right now. It's, uh, it's, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, it is significant. Um, I'm gonna take you real quickly into, oh, actually, before I do that, yeah. I'll show you the vault. Uh, before I show you the vault real quickly, I wanna show you this wall okay. that we did. Oh, look at Not this. Too long ago. Huge uh, red wall, all sorts of Dixie logos all over it. But, which is cool, but the most important part is that diamond right there, um, which is part of our, it's a, it's a pared down version of our mission, but we put it really large on this wall so that not only could people like yourself coming in to, to see the facility get a sense for that, but also uh, so that our employees can look at this on a regular basis and have that reminder of what we're doing. And I'll, I'll just read it real quickly. It says, innovation down to our core. Our mission, we will lead the growth of the cannabis industry on a global scale through transparency, which we've talked about, a focus on safety and science, thought leadership, and a relentless pursuit of innovation through every aspect of our business culminating in the most consistent production of the world's, uh, culminating in the consistent production of the world's most sought after cannabis products. There you that's go. Our, that's our mission statement. So, you know, it gives employees that reminder of what they're doing here and why they're doing it, even if they're doing the same thing on a production line every day or they're, you know, steam shrinking the, the uh, labeling around our bottles, whatever it is they're doing, they're, they're contributing to that aspect in that Re mission. Remember the, the longer view. And you've also got a message on the, the door, the employee door on the way in. We'll take a picture of that and put that up. Yeah. Pretty cool stuff. So, so this is our, um, what we call the vault. Um, it's the only part actually of the facility that we don't have windows into it. Uh -huh. But- uh, And it, it required key card access. Yeah. yeah, yeah, very secure because this is where we store finished product, raw plant material. Um, so it's got a lot of additional security. Uh, you know, uh, reinforced walls, uh, uh, tremor sensors, things like that. What product do we have right here at the front of the room? Our, this is our Elixir, uh, our flagship. Oh, this is the OG. This is the new, oh, the uh, new. model, new packaging. Yeah. Actually, we got new shrink, shrink wrap sleeves as well that I'll show you that makes this look even cooler now. Mm -hmm. um, we're probably just going through the end of this particular run of them, but this is, uh, we're holding a bl uh, sparkling blueberry. It's a 90 milligram Elixir. Um, the story behind this is that it was really one of our flagship products, and when they changed the rules and regs in Colorado back in February, February 1, they went into effect, um, we had about four to five months prior to that to begin making changes to our packaging to meet those rules and regs, which for anyone who's in the consumer packaged goods uh, space, they know that that's not a lot of time to completely change your entire packaging and, and, and products set. That's turning on a dime. That's turning on a dime, yeah. yeah. And so we couldn't actually turn that quickly. So this product, because it had, we had to find a, uh, a, a container that was uh, child resistant, resealable to child resistant state, held carbonation, had a dosing or measuring mechanism, was opaque. I mean, you know, the, the, there were all of those requirements. It doesn't exist. There is no such thing on the market. So we went to work with uh, our partners at Tricor Braun and, and we actually developed this. Um, it's, there is nothing about the individual parts and pieces that are proprietary. It's actually a combination, it's how we put them all together mm. that made this a, a very unique um, uh, packaging uh, option for us. But we were off the market for two months with our flagship product as we got this, this bottle together. So we got them back in market just in time for 420. Okay, uh, which is uh, an important uh, yeah, tent important, pole, if you will. Knowledge. Indeed. So, um, We've got all sorts of product here. There's uh, what? I'll show you that I was talking about the, the mints. Um, oh, there you go, yeah. So these are the uh, the Awakening Mints, right. as you can see. I'm trying to find a place for my beer here. Those are yellow. I think the uh, uh, the other orange. ones are purple-ish. Orange and green, but orange close. and green. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'm colorblind, so. <laughs> okay. Well, that helps. <laughs> um, but you can see the, the individual four-pack sleeves yeah. are child resistant. Um, each one, each single one. Each, each, and they also say five THC on them, so we press the the number on there. Um, but the packaging is sophisticated. It is. Um, age appropriate for adults, and it is, um, this is one of our top sellers. Uh, so hopefully, you know, you can see the brushed aluminum kind of has a very sophisticated look to it. Absolutely. This also, uh, 
you know, uh, brings into mind, and we'll probably talk about it uh, in the one-to-one -one interview, uh, the, the recent report on uh, testing of, uh, of MIPS, of uh, infused products, and, and the inconsistencies there. What I can see is you've pressed uh, the milligram dosage right onto the product. So we're ahead of the game here. Well, yeah, yeah and I'll tell you something else. So. Uh, we can talk about that at length because yeah. I have a lot of strong feelings about that. Yeah, we'll leave it to the other interview, yeah. But, you know, here you can see we have to also adhere a, a compliance sticker after the product has been made. So our target dosage is 90 milligrams. Then after it's tested, we actually post the test results on each individual product. So this one is exactly right on. It has mm -hmm. 90 milligrams of THC. But mm -hmm. if, if we went through this whole batch, <coughs> excuse me, we find some that maybe were 88, some that might be 92. Mm -hmm. But it's got CBD, CBNs, it's got everything right there. Yeah, it measures all of the various uh, cannabinoids. This is, by the way, this is the new shrink wrap. The other one, if you, I don't know if you really are colorblind, but I'm not. One, okay. <laughs> the other one's like a flat, sort of a, a gray. This is like a nice brush aluminum look. So. Yeah, this this uh, kind of <laughs> does the same thing as the uh, as the mints. Yeah. Or yeah, as the mints. Or as a true bottle as well. Exactly. Well, that's we used to have a brushed aluminum bottle that was actually brushed aluminum, but. Um, and I, I had seen that uh, back in the day, yeah. before the turn, so to speak. So, you know, so that's really kind of, the, that's it. This is where all of the, uh, all the work happens. The products are all put together. Um, some are packaged over there, some are packaged back here. That's our shrink sleeve tunnel. So it's, it steam wraps the, sh uh, the labeling around the bottles. Yeah. Um, I was going to say you don't have a lot of, but now I'm seeing tons and tons of product back here. Well, those are those are packaging uh, box, you know, box, boxes with their packaging or raw ingredients, things like that. So. so that's not finished product. That's not finished product. So you guys are really quick on turns for inventory. There's, I mean. Well, you know, it, it's interesting. I mean, uh, someone mentioned that the other day when they saw our inventory, they're like, oh, there's really have a lot in there. And I <laughs> said, Jesus, I look at it and I think, thank God we have that much because last year at this time, there was nothing in there, and we were constantly behind, constantly in the back order scenario. We now have, you know, three weeks, a month worth of supply that uh, that we can meet demand, and so I feel great about what we have back there. But yeah. I think in other industries, you look at that and you say, well, that doesn't seem like you have a lot of shelves, right. but we do, we, as far as I'm concerned. So. Fantastic. And so then here's... Uh you know, uh, a big open space, basically uh, power coming down from the ceiling for, for, for what reason? Well, this actually was a bakery facility before we took over a commercial bakery. Uh, so a lot of the infrastructure was already here. You know, those, that's kind of how they, they function because that way you can move parts and pieces around and always have access to power. You don't have to worry about getting to a wall or being up against a wall. So you can, that's why they drop the, the power from the ceiling. There you go. And that is the Dixie Elixir uh, tour. Joe Hodes, thanks so much. That is the tour, my pleasure. Let's finish these beers and uh, do the other interview. Let's go. <laughs> That's Dixie Elixirs, of the tour edition, of course. And I uh, hope you are scrolling through those pictures because that last picture, uh, the employee door, what's written on there, kind of got a kick out of that. Uh, really gives a sense of uh, not only how they look at the the company but how they feel about the employees and how the whole thing comes together